So we haven't told many people, but Dante and I are trying to get pregnant. Oh my gosh, congratulations! Wait, what happened to the, uh, now's not a good time, I'm too stressed, I don't want to get pregnant. Well, that was before you forced me to take a pregnancy test and it turned out positive. That was a false alarm, right? Well, the doctor didn't really know it could have been a bad test or a chemical pregnancy, but either way, it made us think about having a child and what it would mean and if we want it, and turns out we do. I knew it. <laughs> you guys are gonna make the cutest parents. Well, we're trying, so I have to record my temperature and like write down the stuff that we're doing in a journal. <laughs> oh, wow. And the um, sitting upside down? I just read somewhere that it helps, like gravity helps, that, or it can't hurt. Mm -hmm. And here I thought getting pregnant would be fun. There are fun parts. Oh, man. <laughs> you realize you're glowing, right? I mean, I, I know that I'm supposed to be happy for you guys, and, and I am. You and Dante are just so in love and perfect for each other, and now you're going to be having a family. You know, you used to be as good at relationship sabotage as I am, so... How did you manage to pull yourself back from the brink? And I never did. I take it you haven't told Spinelli how you really feel. I wanted to at the wedding. I wanted to, to pull him aside and look him in the eye and tell him that I love him. He's the one I, I want to spend the rest of my life with, the one I want to build my life with, and that it doesn't scare me. The thought of committing myself completely to Spinelli, it doesn't scare me. It actually thrills me and excites me. <laughs> you need to tell him this. The sooner the better. I know. It's just then he asked, asked Ellie to go to the wedding with him, and now they're on a bird-watching picnic together, and that is important. I don't care what you say. I just think it's too late. If there has been one thing that I've learned, it's that if two people are meant to be together, it is never too late for them to find their way back to each other. I have gone through hell to fight my way back here to find Anna, and I have no intention of leaving. You don't live here. We do. Uh, Luke and I, we have a lot of things that we need to discuss. And I can't possibly ask Duke to leave, because we, I oh. have to talk to him. He can wait downstairs in the bar. Caroline has a fine wine list. All right. You want to talk in front of the ghost? I can do that. I did what you asked. I found Robert, and I came clean with him. I told him that Ethan is my son, not his, and that I had lied to him to give him a reason to live. And? And what do you think? It came to blows. And Holly negotiated a ceasefire. So Robert and Holly have found their way back to each other? Well, there's hope for the rest of us. So I did what I said I was going to do. I found Robert, and I cleared things up with him. Now, I'd like to clear things up with you. Look, Slim, we've got something here, something real. And I don't want to lose it. And I don't think you do either. There's just one problem with that. Anna's my wife. I did marry Duke Lavery, but then he died twice, which makes her a widow twice, free to remarry. And she did, pardon me for this, not only to Robert Scorpio, but also to some guy in Pine Valley. I think his name was... David. The Haywood. Yeah. What... Luke is right. We, everybody thought that you were dead. Not of course. I would have expected you to move on with your life, but I'm not dead. I am here. So therefore, all subsequent marriages, they become null and void. Well, if that's true, you and your attorneys can take it up with City Hall. Now, if you start the process today, you might be back for Christmas dinner. I'm not leaving until I've had a private conversation with Anna. Well, if you're not leaving and I'm not I'm leaving... I'm leaving. Then... Going back to the police station. Wait a minute, you can't walk out I'm on us. I'm still commissioner of this city and there are two dangerous criminals on the loose, Heather Webber and Joe Scully Jr., so... We still need to talk. Anna, we, we need to talk. We will talk. I'll talk to both of you later. You're a genius. I am? Yes, I don't know what I was so upset about. I just need to tell Spinelli how I feel. Wait, Max. Well, I could find him after his date. I mean, how long does it take to look at birds anyway? Just one minute. Wait. Wait, for what? Didn't you just say that it's never too late for people to find their way back to each other again? 
I did, and that's absolutely true. But if you go to Spinelli and tell him everything he's ever wanted to hear, he might think... Think what? That I finally know the truth? That we belong together? That he missed me just as much as I miss him? I was just too stubborn to admit it? That before I was taking advantage of Spinelli, but I would never do that again? I, I know, I know that you mean that, and, and you really, really mean that, but he might think that you're saying all of this stuff because he's with somebody else. Thanks a lot. Wait, don't misunderstand. You still need to tell him how you really feel. I just think that you need to bring a little something extra to the table. Like what? I don't know, just something that would get his attention, something that might show him how much you care about him. It's a really good idea, but what? What? You have no idea how glad I am those tests I ran were correct. I hated thinking I'd made a mistake in the lab. But I regret that you had to doubt yourself. Well, I was just telling Maxie that the lab and the laws of science are so much more reasonable than, well, the outside world. In regards to Maxie, you said something earlier that puzzled me. I did? Yeah, that the last thing that Maxie wanted was to be friends with me, but that you had a feeling and then we got interrupted. Right, of course. Uh, what I was going to say was that... I just got the distinct feeling that Maxie was in fact... Oh my. Hey, Sam, I, I am so sorry for subterfuge earlier. I, I wanted to tell you what I knew about the baby, but I, I was afraid that our hopes were unfounded. It's okay, none of that no, matters now. We just now. need to know if Heather told Steve anything about Sam's baby. Right. right. Did Heather explain why she took this child? Was it for ransom? What Whatever it want? is, I'll pay. I don't care what she wants. I just want my son back. My mother isn't after money. Well, then what does she want? A family. She was talking about the baby like it was her own son. After everything we've shared, the least you could do is help me and my baby get out of Dodge. What, 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 what do you mean, your baby? Don't change the subject. I need passports. And I need money. No, I cannot help you disappear with this kid. Of course you can. He's not your child. You, you, can't, you can't play God with him. What do you think you were doing out in the woods? when you let Taya take Sam's baby. If that's not playing God, I don't know what is. No, it was your idea to give Taya Sam's baby, not mine. That's not what I'll tell the cops. You blackmailing me? Let me tell you something. You blackmail me and Stephen Lars will be behind bars faster than he can change his own socks. Stephen Lars has turned his back on me. I have another child to provide for. It's not your child. If you don't get me and my son out of this country, I'll be happy to share the details of all of your crimes with anyone who'll listen. Fine. Give me the damn address. I thought you'd come around to my way of thinking. <laughs> it's the Nightlight Motel. Room 203. Nightlight Hotel. Oh, and Todd, I guess I don't need to tell you, but no one else needs to know about this. Right. I'm so glad the results were correct, and I really hope everything works out with your friends. Speaking of, I can finally tell you what I was going to tell you before. Oh, yes. Please enlighten me. Okay, so even though Maxie said she didn't want to be your friend, I just had the distinct impression that she was protesting too much, and she actually really cares about you. And I think Maxie misses having you in her life. Do you think she's jealous of, of you dating me? To be honest, I... I guess I hadn't even considered that as a possibility. Well, good, because uh, it's not. It's, it's not a possibility. I mean, I mean, she couldn't be jealous because she made it crystal clear that she has no romantic interest in me whatsoever. You're right. I need to prove to Spinelli that I'm serious about him. But I can't do that if I'm still married to Matt. So what are you going to do? I don't know. But I need to talk to Matt. Though it was painful at the time, I'm really grateful that Maxie was honest about her lack of feelings for me because if she hadn't been, I might not have opened myself up to life's possibilities. Heather wants to keep my son? I think she's trying to prove she can be a good mother. At least that gives her incentive to take care of the baby. Well, sure I'm sorry, safe. but that doesn't make me feel any better. There's another problem. The baby's on medication for beta thalassemia. What if my son doesn't get his medicine? Find the baby before we have to deal with that. 
Time for your medicine. You're always such a good boy when I give it to you. Oh, dear. That was the last dose. Hey, Heather. John. Oh, any progress on Heather? No, not yet. Are you okay? Like I said, I'm here to shower, unpack, and get some rest. There's the door. Why don't you do yourself a favor, Spencer, and bow out gracefully? I don't do gracefully. It's not my style. Then I suggest you change your style and perhaps just lower your expectations. Whatever you thought you had with Anna, you no longer have. Something came up in my personal life. Can't quite wrap my head around it. Can I help? Yeah. You can keep me focused. I need to work. Good. All right, let's start with Todd Manning. All right, if my hunch is correct, he'll lead us right to Heather Weber. Two, three, seven, four, five, seven, five, seven. 